name is Sios, and you are listening to the MBS Show. Hello and welcome to the MBS Show, episode number one seventy-five. I am your host Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Kyle. Hey everyone, how are you doing? Cool, cool. I'm doing fine. And our guest for this week, well. Uh, guess why don't you introduce yourself to the people who might not know who you are and what you do? My name is Eos, as my pen name states. My real name is Yao Feng, but Eos is essentially fine, really. Uh, and hello, how are you doing, man? Not bad, not bad. Cool, cool. So before I can officially start the show, I need to ask you the four important questions. And question number one is favorite character. Favorite character. Oh my goodness! If I really had to choose, I guess Rarity. <laughs> rarity. Why Rarity? I guess because to me she has the most character. I can agree with that. I can agree with that. And creative people can relate to her, especially in that one episode. And talking about episode, what's your favorite one? My favorite episode, or rather, two of them, would be the uh, Crystal Empire Crystal. episode. Yeah. Crystal Empire. Oh, huh, okay. I I don't hear people saying that one was their favorite just because of how, well, Sombra was not utilized well enough in that episode. Well, I agree, but、uh, at the same time, though, it's more along the lines of how they decided to introduce a completely new locale that really、uh, caught my attention compared to other episodes. Hmm. All right. All right. Because well, if you're interested in the Crystal Empire, do check out the comic books that's going to come out soon.、Uh, it's they're going to explore more on that setting and explain a bit about well the Crystal Empire. If you're interested, in it, that is. Okay. Well, definitely. I mean, the comics are. I mean, the comics are looking、uh, pretty good at the moment. I mean, have you heard that they're?、Um, I heard recently that、uh, they're making some sort of new pony comic app on iOS. Yeah, true, true. But we'll get into that later. Later. So,、um, how did you become a fan of the show? I think it kind of started when I saw a friend watching the show. So you know, it kind of piqued my interests because of、uh, my childhood experiences with ponies as well. I have a sister in the family, which you know, at one point she was interested in My Little Pony as well. And、uh, I think that was during、um, G One, I think, if I'm not wrong. Oh, that's that's way back when. That's way back when. You watched the show before then, I guess. Uh, no. It's more along the lines of,、uh, you know, like I said, my friend was watching it, and、uh, it piqued my interest, and everything just snowballed from there. Oh, what was the first episode you saw, if you remember? Like, looking at your friends at that point. I think it was the golden ticket. Oh wow, that episode. That's I think episode number three. Wow, that that's way back when. So when you ask your friend, did he like well try to hide it or anything? No, not really. He's not really that kind of person. Hmm. This was when during college or something like that. No, actually at work. To be, ah, <laughs> to be well, honest. Well, that workplace seems very kind to you guys for watching shows on their work time. <laughs> well, it was uh, it was towards the end of our work hours anyway. So, ah.、Uh... So if the boss don't know, it won't hurt them. All right, all right. So last question is: What do your family and friends think about your love for this show? Indifference, really.、Mm, they don't really care, then, right? Nope. I guess to my family, it's really just a show. Hmm. That is rare to hear that because some people. Well, I, I talk to a lot of people, and some of them say like, "Oh, my dad doesn't like me watching this," or "Oh, they support me, whatever I do," kind of deal. Right, right. I think you're the first to say that.、Oh, it's just a show, like whatever.、Uh, that's cool. That's cool. Thanks for answering our questions. And Kyle, you mentioned about something about to do with a comic, right?、Uh, yes. Well, no. It was just because、um, when you were talking about the comics, that、um, I'm feeling really jealous of owners of any sort of Apple products at the moment, because、uh, apparently there's been this announcement that on iOS there's a new app that allows you to. I, I think it's to. Download or collate all your My Little Pony comics together,、mm. or download copies together, and it's like I've just got a normal computer. I can't do this, so I'm a little bit jealous. All right, cool, cool. 
By the way, EOS, do you have an iOS or Apple device? I used to. Oh, you used to? Yeah, the uh, I, I used to own the iPod Touch, which uh, conked out on me about earlier this year. Oh, all right. Yeah. Well, I, I guess you won't be getting this comic app then. Eh. I guess not. <laughs> but don't fret, don't fret. If I do remember right, uh, they're trying to make it work with the Comixology app. And right. if you have a Comixology account, you can make it work with this one. And if you do have a Comixology app, you can also work it with the PC. Well, uh, oh, okay. in the worst case scenario, I can always just uh, hijack my friend's iPad, really. So, you know, I'm not, re- I'm not really too worried. Yay, hijacking is magic. <laughs> uh, I need to ask you, I need to ask you, yours. what are you well known for? Because I invited you on the show and mostly people are here, well, they do do something. So what do you do? If you're talking about profession, I'm currently working as a freelance artist. On DeviantArt, you know, I think as the name would imply, you know, I'm still an artist. So, you know, I'm not really deviating from my profession much either. So when you do the arts, like, do you use DeviantArt as your portfolio or do you have a professional portfolio stash away? I have a personal portfolio as well as uh, DeviantArt and several other websites which I curate every now and then. Hmm, all right, all right. So I'm looking through your gallery right now and I have to say, your artwork is really, really awesome. Oh, thank you. I'm just looking like, Kai, what did you tell me before? Uh, I mean, I was having a look at your art earlier on, and the thing that got me about it was uh, what's well, quite distinctive. I mean, it's incredibly gothic uh, pony art, but like you know, really vivid. I, I mean, I obviously love it. Thank you. So, what do you use besides um, a computer and a tablet? I'm assuming. Well, I do mess around with some traditional media, but primarily uh, pencil and paper. But other than that, I generally work digitally. Ah, digital. So, do you use Photoshop, Intosai, or even Manga Studio? Uh, I have dabbled a little bit in uh, Manga Studio, but it's primarily Photoshop and Sai. Ah, so you mix both in one art, something like that? Do you use like Manga Studio for the line art and Photoshop for the coloring? Uh, that depends, really. That on honestly, that really depends. But uh, as it stands right now, I just uh sketch in Sai or occasionally Manga Studio and then, you know, I port it over to Photoshop for, you know, everything else. That's interesting because I do remember some artists saying that they sketch in uh, Sai or maybe Manga Studio and do most of the coloring and shading in uh, Photoshop. So you actually go back and forth between one and the other. It really depends on, you know, what I'm trying to do at the time and, you know, whether I'm in the mood to sort of jump between softwares. But yeah, you know, generally speaking, you know, I sketch in Sai and then, you know, once I'm done with the sketching phase, I just port everything to Photoshop and do everything there. Hmm, all right. That's cool. That's cool. And also joining us, he's a bit late, is Ro. Hello, all you happy people. Where have you been? We're starting. I have been praising the sun. <laughs> yes, that's what I have been doing. Let's go with that. <sighs> okay. And, you know, also returning from the dead, John DeLancey is back on Twitter after two years. Wait, he was away? Yep. Apparently. I don't know why, but he is away and he's back now. And one of his first few messages is that a little peek into the future, just recorded a new MLP episode today, really good script, great funds, mum's the word. So, yeah, this course is going to be in the future. Yay. Won't ever say no to a bit more Discord. It should be absolutely great. And it's it's quite interesting to see how John Delancey's been off Twitter for the last few years. Or, in, in fact, like, I don't particularly use Twitter. Like, does anyone here use Twitter that much? I use I, Twitter. I a do lot. a bit. And Yos, do you use Twitter? No. Ah. Oh, good. I'm not alone then. Because it's like, <laughs> I do have a Twitter, but it's like linked to my Facebook. So only ever, like, anything I put in Facebook, it goes into Twitter. But I don't ever go onto Twitter itself. Ah, uh, okay. So, okay. So, Duff, just out of curiosity, what do... This is going to sound like a really tough question. What do you use Twitter for? Who? Uh, to all of you. The general question. Uh, uh, 
Normally, I just talk with the other com- web comic artists, tweets about random thoughts I have in my head, and other things. You know, general Twitter stuff. And kittens. Can't forget the kittens. Oh, of course. General stuff, talking to people and whatnot. It's funs. It's funs. But, yes, you don't tweet, right? No, not at all. Uh, any reason why? I don't really have a need for it, I guess. I, I guess, because when I started Twitter, I just wanted it because, well... I kind of want it, and I may want to talk to these people and get to know them, and yeah, <laughs> that's how I got into it. Okay. Well, honestly, if you can, well, find a use for it, then by all means. Back to your art. Like, I'm seeing a lot of good artwork here, and what's your inspiration? Could you clarify? Well, okay, Um, a few of your work, like uh, Weapons Guy Render, like, what's the inspiration for this guy? Oh, um... Well, essentially, military gear and uh, animals. Military gear and animals. Nothing can go wrong. (laughs) But the coloring on this one is awesome. What did you use with this one? Uh, This was painted primarily in Sai. Hmm. Everything in Sai? Even the line arts? Uh, Yes. Hmm. There was a bit of color tricks which I did in Photoshop, but yeah, primarily Sai. Wow. This looks awesome. I do like this. And hmm, how do I go into this one without sounding weird? Um, One of your drawings called Bedtime. <laughs> What's the story behind this one? Bedtime, bedtime. Um, let me just check. I need to jog my memory. Ah, okay. Well, uh, it was it was pretty much about a few days after I read that uh, comic with Pinkie Pie dressing up as... <laughs> You know, put, Thems- putting on that weird suit. Yeah, yeah themselves. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I was, my, my, my mind was just going wild at the time, so, you know, I was like, wouldn't it be a good idea to do this? Oh, uh, and I think it is. Very interesting. <laughs> so, yeah, you know. Uh, and I do see a lot of people do like this one. And this was what, during 2013? You've been on a while. Yes, I've been on since I was in um, towards the end of secondary school. Oh wow! So, what do you use DeviantArt mostly for? Mm, to post art. Post art, because uh, I'm looking through your gallery, and well, the featured is just two. So, what do you draw more? Like, do you draw ponies, or do you draw well uh, anything else that you that pique your interest? Um. Anything and everything, really. All right, all right. Anything specific that you can tell us? Mm, I suppose my primary interests would be in characters. Like, you know, the more interesting the design, you know, the more interested I am in sort of trying to, you know, put my own spin on it. Mm, I do see that in some of your works. I do see that. Cool, cool. What do you think is your speciality? Character design, backgrounds, coloring? What do you feel... Like a professional, like real professional at. That's a bit difficult to answer at this point of time. Um, I suppose what I can say at this point of time is that I try to be as good as I can be in every facet of it. You know, uh, I try to be good in back, uh, background design, in uh, sort of uh, creating, you know, backdrops, architectural work. Uh, you know, I try to diversify my use of color. And yeah, you know, as far as characters, you know, as I said before, you know, I try to, uh, you know, make things interesting. Hmm. All right. And I do see that you also mess with three D modeling and also printing them. Is it right? That was during college because uh, at the time I was studying for uh, animation, where you know we cover you know all things two D and three D. And uh, at the time, at the time, right, you know, everyone was really into 3D. Not to say that everyone is st- is not into 3D now. It's just that you know, I kind of moved on into more illustrative works. Hmm, I, I can understand that. I can understand that. Working with 3D is not easy. I was there too during my college years, and uh, 3D is not easy. Let's just say that the tools right now we have, it's. It's gotten better, but during back in the days, ugh, was it a hassle? 
And I see that you also have printed your character in 3D. So that's cool. Oh, you mean the... Uh, that Some dude. Yeah, that's the some dude thing. Let me just check. Oh, that that is actually sculpted by hand. Oh, really? No, not 3D printed? Nope. Mm, wow, that's cool. That is cool. You know, if you do this today and you sculpt them, like if you sculpt ponies, I'm, I'm betting you can earn a lot of big bucks just to post them online. People will sure ask you to do one for them. Well, you know, I would love to, honestly, but uh, <laughs> the cost of materials and, uh, you know, the time needed would be, you know, slightly counterproductive for me. Yeah, true. And then you have to sell it at a high price, which is, well, you want it, you have to buy it at a high price. <laughs> yep, pretty much. Mm-hmm. But you know, somebody in the market there is helping us, and it's Funko. And currently, Funko has a few ponies out there, including Mod Pie, Queen Chrysalis, Kutalu, well, basically the CMCs, and Cheese Sandwich. So, yay, if you're interested in those ponies... Right. They're okay. going to come out soon. And if I do remember right, uh, the CMCs are out. Well, it's very useful information. Yeah, I, I know it's hard for us, but I'm sure people out there want them. And I, for one, collect them all. I just need Luna and Celestia to complete my collection before this comes out. Ah, uh, Someone please help me. My bank account's not helping. I would offer to help, but I already know that Diane is already bookmarking any funds for Midnight Scouts Creative Vibes for those new pony toys. I can almost see her right now on Amazon, hovering over the buy it now option, just going, I could, I could, I, I am, I am, just click, 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 gone, there's the budget, gone, goodbye. Just like a huge, like, forklift truck coming up to her house, it's like, you know, with like, just racks and racks and racks of toys just to fill up her spare room. Because it is just chock a block full of pony toys. I actually stayed at hers a couple of weeks back, mm. and it is. When I say it's filled with ponies, I mean it's filled with ponies. Like you know, it's like I could turn in any direction. You can see about twenty ponies staring back at you. <laughs> wow, that is scary. It is scary, but uh, I mean, there's more ponies in that room, in like in that bit of space than there are Scottish people in the town that she lives in. Like, if you were to expand it out. So actually, it, yeah, they're, they're taking over. <laughs> oh, wow. That's a hostile takeover that is really, really scary. <laughs> scary, but it's beautiful. I mean, it, it's always great going over there. And, and, you know, once again, it's all that. It's that, that whole thing of just enjoying the passion of the fans of, you know, the range and of the show. You know, it's great seeing that, uh, you know, people who enjoy it so much, they've got that passion for it. Mm, true, true. Loving what we love, it needs passion, and arting also is passion. So, yes, you mentioned that you were a professional or freelance artist. Yep. So what do you do with that? Like, what does it mean? Well, in, in the simplest terms, it's really producing art uh, commercially. Hmm, so basically, like, taking on commissions, or is it something else? Well, uh... It really, it really depends on your own personal definition, really. Uh, commissions and uh, commercial arts, you know, are terms that's very easily interchangeable. But I suppose for me, it's more along the lines of, you know, uh, full-on contracted work. Hmm. Oh, okay, so basically a big company or small company hires you to do art for them? Yeah, more or less. Ah. Is there any company that well, uh, you can share info with, like, you. we can see your work in public? Uh, unfortunately, at the moment, I don't really have anything uh, due to, uh, you know, non-disclo- non-disclosure agreements. Uh, so, you're coming soon. Can't wait kind of delay. Well, I hope I can show them. So, yeah, fingers crossed. Well, your art is awesome, and I, I hope people do see it, because... I'm taking a look at your gallery, and I wonder, why was this not featured on EQD yet? That's the same question I've been asking myself. Like, what, what's up, EQD? I think, I think I was featured once, if I recall. Just once? Yep. Blasphemy, well, we need it, more. Well, uh, in terms of, you know, me as a whole. Uh, as uh, for oh. artwork, I think I was featured quite a few times, actually. 
Oh, really? No. How well, the heck did we miss that? Well, <laughs> uh, busy life schedule, maybe <laughs> bills to pay. <laughs> no, less research. I don't know. <laughs> but cool. Th- that's awesome on you because, well, I'm looking at your art here and this is awesome. This is good. I can't say, mm, it's hard for me. It's hard for me to say. So how much is the standard commission for you? Like in terms of, um, let's say I'm hiring you to do a commission for me. It really depends on uh, whether you want a single character illustration or a group character illustration. It based on our budget then? To a certain degree, yes. So is there a table of how much is the minimum and what's the well, maximum is the sky, I guess. But what's the minimum for you? Well, again, you know, it depends on whether you want a single character or, or a group character. For a single character illustration, I think it's 40. Yeah, 40. That's $40, right? Not ringgit. Yeah, 40 US. <laughs> wow. If ringgit, I would so hire you now. But uh, US is really high for me, so I can't. Uh, this sad. But I think 40 is a good starting point. And for example of 40 is Eos the Human uh, Apostate. Is it? This one of your single character kind of deal? Yes, pretty much. Wow. For 40 and I get this? That's worth it. That's worth it a lot. Well, it's it's a it's a philosophy that I try to sort of uh, live with when I do this sort of thing, where you know I make it a point that I am not cheap by any means, you know, to the average sort of uh, U.S. citizen. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I honestly doubt that anyone has forty bucks just lying around, really. Mm, true that, but sometimes you get to wonder if people can go buy Blu-rays or DVDs. Forty that that costs more than that. I'm I'm sure that forty is not a is it's just jump change for them. Yeah, well, you know that's the thing. You see, uh, so while I charge relatively high compared, you know, to other people, I make it a point to make sure that I'm affordable. But on top of that, I want to bring as much worth as I can. Mm, the perfect balance between being affordable and top bucks. I-, I can see that. I can see that. And it shows in your work. Like, it looks awesome and starting price is at 40 And this includes background, right? Yes. So, example of Forest X Sakura, that is a total of 80 or more? Oh, uh, this would be, yeah, this would be 80, because uh, it's more than one character. More than one character, yeah. Yep. So it's totally 80, but the background, like, including background, that that is, well, I hope you get more commissions after this show comes out, because I am thinking of hiring you, man. Okay. <laughs> I look forward to it. Yeah, the, the, your art is some, well, it's something else, like, it's, it's cool, it's cool. So does the size matter? Like, if I ask a canvas of one eighty, one sorry, um, one ninety, twenty. Oh, what's the what's the resolution size? Ah, ten eighty p. Yeah, ten eighty p. Does that count into the factor? No, not at all. Doesn't? Not at all. Oh wow! All right. Well, this I mean, it's, it's essentially just the uh, canvas size, you know. So it doesn't really matter to me. Believe it or not, you know, I work on a canvas size that's much, 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 much bigger than ten eighty p. Alrighty then. Proof if we're ever needed that size doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, I've been saying this yeah. for ages. That's what he said. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you said it, not me. <laughs> oh, I wanted to, I wanted to go there, but no, I, I'm still. I had oh, to wow. bite my tongue for ages where you were going for that conversation. I was going, like, I can't say it now. I can't. He's making a serious <laughs> point. I can't. I've got to wait to the end. <laughs> uh, well, he said it, but still, I do like this. And according, well, uh, according to your price, so how does the commission go for you? Like, okay, it's eight forty per character, and you double that for each character on. So no, actually, uh, for group character, I offer it at uh, three, uh, minimum of three, at eighty uh-huh. bucks. But you know, if you exceed more, you know, if you exceed one character, it's already eighty bucks right there. That price would only stick. To up to three characters. If you go above that, then you know there will be surcharges. Oh, 
as per usual, as per usual. So, if I say I want to hire you now, I say I want three characters in a drawing, and do I need to describe the background for you? You can if you want. Ah, so, but that will all be under 80 then, right? Yep. Hmm. And how long does it take you? Like, I'm sure you have a long list of commission works to be done, am I right? <laughs> well, not precisely, I would say. Oh. I, I just get through them really, really so slow because, you know, some either, you know, I'm not really in the mood or, you know, the amount of research that I put into it is taking longer than I expected. Mm, and real life sometimes gets in the way. Yep. Mm, don't forget that. Yeah, and then, you know, my professional uh, commercial work as well. Mm. So it's it's a lot of uh, juggling to a certain degree. Mm, all right, all right. You know, I now you got me interested. This is something awesome. So people pay you via PayPal then, right? Yes. Ah, all right. I need to get in contact with you more. This is interesting. I like it. <laughs> well, I mean, if you're really interested, you can just drop me a note over on DA and uh, we can discuss more then. Alrighty then. So the best way for you to do it is on DA. And well, anyone who's listening to this and has seen EOS's art, I do recommend because I'm interested and I rarely am interested in asking for commission from artists. His art is worth the buck. EOS, um, knowing that you're a Malaysian and us having a hard time getting the DVDs, have you seen any DVDs out there and tried to get them? I, I guess I should put it out there. Uh, I don't really have much interest in sort of procuring hard products. Primarily, primarily because, you know, space is a very limited commodity for me. I can understand that. I can understand that. I've seen some. I don't really like what they're offering. It's just a normal stack of DVDs with three episodes or five episodes in it. It's not worth the bang for the buck, if you know what I mean. Right. Mm -hmm. And plus space, that's another issue. Yeah, that's another issue altogether. Mm. Well, I suppose, you know, uh, one could only, you know, hope that they would release season box sets. Yeah, I mean, that would be worth it, especially if they include some kind of special product. Like, if I do remember, right, if you get the Harry Potter, you get them inside a box that also doubles as a one stand. That's oh, something. Right? Okay. Interesting. I mean, it's something silly to have, but hey, you well, get... it's novelty items, really. Mm, so. Yeah. So they say you got that, but talking about DVDs, like pony ponies, they how do I put this? Uh, Equestria Girls Friendship Game DVD is out for pre-order, and if you're interested in that, well, yay! The movie's not out yet, but I'm sure it's going to be awesome. Have you seen any of the Equestria Girls line of, of movies? Uh, I've only watched the first one. Ah, really now? Yeah. What are your thoughts on it? Interesting, I guess. Interesting. In a good way or a bad way? Well, it's a mix of both, I guess. Hmm, really now? On one hand, you know, uh, I suppose I was kind of expecting, you know, DHX to really push it, you know, considering that they are working on, you know, the IP in the movie format. I was setting the bar really, really high at that time. Ah. So, all right, I, I can see where you're coming from because we're for working on a movie, higher budget, and you're hoping that they would do more. Ah, understandable, understandable. But if I do remember right, they didn't plan out to go for theaters when it first came out. They just wanted to go for straight to DVD and straight to TV. Right. That's what I remember. So, yeah. Again, what they have produced is actually not bad. But as I say, it's it's just my personal standard because, you know, uh, for me, when I look at films in general, uh, I look for production quality. You mm. know, so it's like, you know, you... I, I, I would look at something and say, oh, this is actually very well made, you know, and, and, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, all right, all right. Whereas for, whereas for this, it's, it's more of a, you know, in a way, they are trying to keep it consistent with their, you know, with their pony episodes, you see, in terms of uh, production quality, which is, you know, which is also good in its own way. You see, there's no sort of uh, separation in terms of, uh, you know, you can tell this is a completely different universe altogether, you see. So, but still keep the feel of ponies in it, like yeah. the flash animation, how it works and whatnot. Mm -hmm. mm. 
Oh, I, I, I see what, I see your point. I see your point. And well, I'm hoping that the 2017 movie that they're coming out with does break the mold a bit because I do agree with you that having a higher budget means that you can do more. But if it's too different from what we are used to, then the fans would not like it. Yeah. If you know what I mean. Yeah, that's 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 the uh, a single possibility really. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And well, I do recommend watching the second movie if you're interested. Right. And if you can find it, it's really good. Okay. Um, it's, it's much better than the first one in terms of first one was the prom, the second one is better of the bands. Right. So yay. I'll keep that in mind. Yeah, I've just got a quick question because uh, you were mentioning earlier on that you um you were doing 3D animation work or something like that while you were in college or in education anyway. How did you find that ability to balance out your your studies and doing the artwork? And did it give you freedom to kind of expand on the art you're doing? Because I know when you're kind of when you're relying on the art you're doing, like as a freelance artist, you might be worried. You know, there might be potential. What are you being pigeonholed? Like, what freedoms did you get in terms of being able to explore when you're in in education? Well, it's it's really you know the the primary freedom would be time, I guess, because uh, compared to most other people, you know, who probably couldn't be wouldn't be able to afford this kind of education. You know, they have to work. You know, they have to you know earn money to pay the rent, their utility bills, and all that. You know, so it really cuts in on their free time. But that's not to say that these people can't be successful either. But by comparison, right, I have that sort of privilege and comfort of time, essentially. Person B, you know, who has to work maybe two jobs every every day, only has two hours to work on his artwork. Whereas for me, I have literally, you know, the whole day outside of classes. So... That was for back in the days of college or studying, right? Yes. But how's your schedule now? Has it gotten loose or more tighter? It depends. It really depends. At one point, it got so tight where, you know, I could, I have to go about three or four days without sleep just to uh, make a deadline. But uh, Mm. sometimes, you know, it's so loose that I can literally spend the whole month playing games and still make my (laughs) deadline. So. Oh, all right. So, a big gamer then, are you? Somewhat, somewhat. What, what do you play? Actually, anything that interests me. Okay, I, I have to ask this because Kyle's here, I'm here. Do you have a Wii U? Nope. Ah. Oh, uh, totally, uh, totally, PC Master totally Race, then? Wii U buddies. <laughs> uh, the closest, th- the closest thing I have to a Wii U would be a 3DS, so. Oh, well, close enough, close enough. 3DS buddies then, yay! Uh, we need to find more people who have 3DS. Sorry, uh, we use because me and Kyle here are having fun, but we need more people to bully. I mean, have fun with. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah, it's a thing of like you know, uh, the amount of people we know who have we use are incredibly low because I think Nintendo sold about ten of them in the last eight months. So I mean, it's trying to find people that have it. You know, is a bit of a challenge, and it's a great system, and I take every opportunity I can to plug it. Because they need the publicity, and it's a great system. True that, true that. But other than video games, do you play any card games? Like what sort of card games? Magic the Gathering, or anything like that? Snap. Oh, um, well, I have a very brief stint with Pokemon. Ah, so you're a Pokemon guy. Do you got in because you, well, Pokemon, or did you like the game? I was a fan back in the day when, you know, it was still just on the Game Boy, really. So, you know, when the the TCG came out, you know, it was a no-brainer for me at the time. It's one way to attract people, and I have played a bit of it, but I moved to Magic. I don't know why, but to me, Magic is much more fun in the sense where it's complicated, but not too complicated, and it's not too easy. You know what I mean? It's the right amount of difficulty and fun. Well, I, I can, I can agree to that. Uh, granted that, you know, I've only discovered magic about a year after I discovered Pokemon, the TCG. And, uh, you know, when people explain the rules to me, you know, I, I literally couldn't wrap my head around it. 
<laughs> that mana for this and that what? Yeah, and you know, people are talking about you know the world and you know you have to do this and you know uh, this card can only be played you know when you when you discard this card you know and yeah you know what that's a lot of information for 11 year old me <laughs> so oh, yeah oh wow that can be easy playing it as an adult is well i won't say easier but like uh it's so complicated uh but at least we can look at the pretty art yeah, on it like, that, that was my fascination with uh, magic cards at the time you know the 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 artwork really mm. Well, the artwork does tell a story, and what I like about magic is, well, the artwork is one, but the world that revolves around it, and the pieces of art that goes with it, like, each card tells a story, and that is why I enjoy it at the same time, too. Oh, I'm, I'm nerding out, sorry about that. That's cool. okay. You have great art, and I am a connoisseur of art, and I, I do love seeing art. And, uh, well, also I'm a yeah, I can't say much. Just art. I just love it. And you, my friend, have good art. Thank you. Talking about art, like, what was your inspiration for drawing? When when do you start and whatnot? Like, I, I just need to know. To be a bit cheesy about it, you know, my origin story, it's pretty much standard for just about every artist. You know, I started off young. And, uh, you know, I was uh, exposed to all sorts of creative media. You know, animation, film, comics, you know, you name it, you know, so the love for it just pretty much grew from there. And it just, you know, got bigger and bigger. And I just thought, you know, why not try earning money from it? Have you ever thought that arting was just a hobby and didn't really bring any big bucks for you or thought of money? Um, At one point, yes. But, you know, then I realized, you know, it's one of those things that I just couldn't quit. So... Yeah. The art bug is calling you, so keep drawing and keep drawing. You know drawing. what they say, when you go art, you can't go back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's true for some people, my friend. That's true for some people. So, being a kid from Malaysia, I'm, I'm guessing your inspiration is mostly from the comics and mangas that's out there, right? I'm guessing one of the popular ones is Dragon mm, Ball. I would say my, f- my first uh, influences would be from... Uh, Animated feature films, actually. Oh, yeah. really? No. Uh, what, what were they, if you remember? Um, Disney, uh, a few Warner Brothers, Universal animations. Mm, those are good places to start. Uh, if I do remember right, back in the days when I couldn't even remember, I do watch a lot of Disney cartoons like uh, Chip and Dale, Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, and then uh, I, I forgot, maybe Tom and Jerry's, something yep. like that. But they were they were really awesome, and I'm guess I'm guessing we're lucky. Back in our days, cartoons were fun, not like today's cartoon. They're just complicated. Well, we very quickly just tried not to mention that My Little Pony is a cartoon. Well, it's or should we put terms or should we put terms and conditions? Kids shows today aren't very good, but My Little Pony is all right. No, my little point is a way of life. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, well, no, you I'm just have kidding. to kind of admit that, you know, by the end of the day, these uh, films and cartoon series are, you know, essentially created by adults. You know, so, mm, you know, sure, for yeah. the most part, you know, they might insert a few jokes here and there, which, you know, back then, you know, when you're just six years old, you probably wouldn't even get it. Looking back now, right, you're like, you know, whoa, I actually watched this? Really? Because I grew up with, uh, you know, for instance, you know, in terms of film, I grew up with, uh, you know, Snow White, uh, Pocahontas, you know, The Jungle Book, you know, those really old stuff. But moving on from there, you know, I watch shows like Ren and Stimpy and, and Rocco and, you know, basically the old Nickelodeon shows, really. Oh, I remember Rocco. It didn't make sense, but I could, I could have just, you know, Cow and like... Chicken. <laughs> oh, God. That show, my goodness! Oh, I love that show. You know, you, I, I watched mm. those shows and I thought nothing of it. But looking back, right, when you understand everything, you know, you, 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 I just question like, how did I even watch this and not get disgusted or anything? Oh yeah, like just the concept of cat dog. That that show by itself is just what. 
is is a cat and a dog in one body in one entity. How do they what and they live what? <laughs> Talk about you, split personality. You're pretty much more concerned yeah. about you know what they do to each other as opposed to you yeah. know the things that they're saying. True. I mean, when when watching it, it was kind of fun. Like they have the personality and whatnot. They they kind of knew what to do, but overthinking it as an adult now, the concept seems dumb. But it's a good show. I do well, like it. A concept doesn't have to be dumb or smart or anything as long as it's well written. I mean, if you can sell it, that's the great thing. Like one show that I always maintain could well be perhaps one of the greatest kids shows ever made is Animaniacs, because oh, wow. the great thing. The, yeah, I'll, no, let's go for it. What was it? Were you about to sing it? We are the Animaniacs. And we're zany to the max. Yeah, I'm not going to go for the whole thing, but... Interesting. Uh, I mean... <laughs> is it, oh, sorry? Yeah? Sorry. Uh, well, interestingly enough, Animaniacs is the only animated series so far that I didn't like as a kid. Oh, and but as an adult, you well, enjoy Well, I can finally see the charm. But back then, I suppose I didn't really get it for uh, Animaniacs. Which is quite interesting because, you know, despite not liking Animaniacs, I enjoyed... Uh, Pinky and the Brain and Freakazoid. Oh, oh yeah. Freakazoid was awesome. Well, the, and we could, oh. I mean, the thing that always got me about Animaniacs, I mean, I loved it as a kid, and even now I still enjoy it, was the fact that it didn't treat kids like idiots in terms of the screw drain. It was really well written. Indeed. And it had, like, and, and like you were saying earlier on about how, um, you know, when you come back to a show as an adult, you can have a different perspective. Like, they always snuck in jokes for adults as well, which were brilliant. <laughs> oh, yeah. And my favourite was, um, there was, uh, this hunter guy speaking to Wacko and he was going, and he said the line, be gone pest and give me the bird. And Wacko, and Wacko <laughs> said, we'd love to really, but the fox censors won't allow it. <laughs> I was thinking about the same episode right now. <laughs> oh, wow. That was, looking at back now, we now get all the adult jokes they put in the adult shows. Back then, I was like, is that supposed to be funny? Like, what just happened? And I'm looking at, oh! Yeah, I mean, oh, Animaniacs uh... is great for just having all those sort of things. Like, they had one, like, an episode where, um, they were painting the, um, Sistine Chapel, you know, the, the famous paint on the ceiling, mm-hmm. and they were going to, and he said something, uh, it was like, wait a second, you want free innocent kids to paint naked people all over a church? We'll do it! <laughs> but we won't do it for the sake of art. And we're not doing it for the sake of money. No, we're doing it because, we like painting naked people. <laughs> Artists in a nutshell. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's so true. But hey, I mean, whatever floats your boat, I guess. Uh, how do I segue from that? Uh, I don't know what's next story. <laughs> uh, uh, God. You know what? I'm just going to put it out there. Japan has a box set DVD for season two coming out. Uh, if you understand Japanese, go buy it. Uh, there's no there's no segue from that. Yeah, it's hard to go from... oh. Pink yes, there is. Speaking too. of boats, now for some news from overseas. Uh, thank you, Ro. A bit late, but yeah, just if that you in. do understand. Nah, it's okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll say our thoughts much louder. <laughs> but yeah, if you do like, uh, if you do understand Japanese and if you want to watch the ponies in Japanese, well, DVDs out on Amazon and yeah, happy hunting. I personally don't understand Japanese, but hey, I'm sure some of us do. Yes, do you understand Japanese? Bits and pieces, really. I mean, I could probably string a very basic sentence together, but that's as far as, you know, my expertise on the language stretches. You know, when you really start getting into your language with me, I'm like, okay. It's cool, it's cool. Japanese is fun. I, I do enjoy it, like their food and culture. But language, ah, I wish I learned that in school. Indeed. Last time I tried to show off mm-hmm. my Japanese, I was accused of racism. <laughs> what? I don't know, man. How? But things escalated quickly, that's all I can say. <laughs> oh, wow. But, oh, wow. Yes, is there anything that we forgot to ask you or something like that? Because I think we might have, but I don't remember. Mm, not that I know of. It's generally just art, I guess. Yeah, and you do good art. That's, that's why I can say, because just look at his gallery, which I will link in the show notes, and whew, this is awesome. Like, I, 
just expect me to throw money at you soon. Okay. I look forward to it. Well, anywho, um, if there's nothing more, uh, Kyle, Ro, any more questions? Where do you see yourself in the next five years? Outside of Malaysia, hopefully, working. Ah, good luck. <laughs> working abroad is fun. That's what I understand. Uh, I can question that statement. <laughs> Depends where abroad is. Yeah, sure. Like does. Well, anyway, anyway, then Malaysia is fun. I hope. <laughs> well, it's it's more along the lines of you know being able to experience new culture. You know, like how differently certain things work somewhere else. You know, and also, and obviously, also the opportunity to you know meet new people and earn foreign currency. Hmm, that is true. That is true. Being anywhere else than locally, like let's just say, if you get a chance to go to well, Japan or the States or even UK, that's some that's a worthwhile experience just to be yep. there. Mm-hmm. Ro Ro can attest to that. He's been to well, the UK, if I remember right. Yep. So we got flashbacks. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, with that, with that, I, I'm guessing we should head off. Uh, anyway, uh, yes, thank you for being on, man. Thank you for being on. No problem. Glad to be here. Hmm. And please do come back again. You're you're always welcome. You're always welcome. Okay. Anyway, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at themuseshow@gmail.com. And if you would like to email us personally, well, links are in the show notes. You can also tweet us on, well, sorry, you can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at themvshow. Well, Sudi, what we'll do stuff. And as for me, you can reach me at Norman Sanzo. I tweet about toys, food, and whatever thing else I fancy. And Ro, what about you, you man? You can find me on my Twitter at Relicious underscore art. I tweet about a lot of stuff lately, and I've been following a lot of webcomics artists. So if you're, like, looking for a good read, you can, like, check out me. I can, like, recommend a few good comics. Hmm. Awesome, Ranging awesome. from Ghostbusters, for unlicensed Ghostbusters, to Magical Pizza Girls. What the... There's a lot of creativity out there, man. You need to follow my Twitter. Uh, okay. <laughs> And what about you, Kyle? Well, you can find me at uh, facebook.com forward slash Kyle McCall. Um, that's where I do I do a lot of script writing and various writing projects there. And also my um, new talk show, Midnight Scribes Creative Vibes with the Highland Bronies, which you can find links there on my Facebook or on the Highland Bronies Facebook at uh, facebook.com forward slash Highland Bronies and the YouTube channel, which is also called Highland Bronies. It's a great show. We've had... Many great guests before and uh, after the current episode. We've had Norman on, as you, you know. We've had Relicious on, which will be in the future. So, a little taster of things to come, dare I say. Plug. plug major plug in neon lights. Midnight Scribes, Creative <laughs> Vibes. Watch, watch, watch. <laughs> now watch the fireworks. All right. <laughs> All right, did it. Anyway, Eos, what about you? Where can the people find you? Um, you can find me at my DeviantArt Gallery at eosfloride.deviantart.com. You can also reach me on my Tumblr. Same name with an extra S to it. Ah, all right, did it. I link everything in the show notes. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio. And also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on from nevilife.com. Anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Relicious. I've been Kyle McCall. I am Eos. And we'll see you guys next week with an exciting episode of the MBS show. Ro, take us out. And we'll see you on the next podcast. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.